the potential is limitless. With the teaching, um, we're going to go talk to the Minecraft teacher in New York. Okay, yeah. We'll see him teaching the classes and things like that. I mean, is that something you ever expected would come of the game? No. I think his nickname is Notch. Oh, yeah, Notch. Notch. You Nacho, say, yeah. you're a great man. Yeah. Notch. <laughs> Nacho. I think the person would be very, like, smart to make Minecraft. <laughs> I think he likes adventures. It's, it's going to be interesting because they're going to be looking back on it nostalgically in like 10 years from now. Oh, that's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, that means, yeah, that means we really need to do it right. Boys, I really need your help. I tried so hard to record this for Brian today. I believe it says in chat what version of the game I'm using. This is Brian's, I hope, newest test beta of his bingo game to see what my FPS levels and so on are. I'm on a low-end laptop. I'll put a screenshot of what kind of a computer I'm on at the end of this. Now, since your names are Ryan and Brian, I think you can see the problem. So excuse me if I don't refer to you by name. I'm going to refer to you by your in-game names because those sound very different. I've been playing Minecraft on this laptop for a little bit over two years. It was old when I got it. When I took it out of the box, the warranty was already expired. But it was cheap. Fortunately, on its way from Jacksonville, Florida at this very minute is coming a used gaming computer that I got off of eBay that has 1,000 terabytes of storage and, let's see, it's a quad core and it's 8 gigs RAM. And anyway, it's a good gaming computer and it can handle anything that you guys can throw at me. Except that here's the problem, Mob Miner. You know, I saw the Optifine post, the guy from Optifine, I don't remember his name. I, it's unpronounceable. And I know you guys aren't getting along, you and Optifine. Put that aside for a while. I believe him about the Java garbage dump. Look at this. Look at me trying to play this game. But there's a lot of wasted stuff. That it's easier on you guys. I don't know why he said that. I, He didn't. Okay, look. I believe in scientific method, and the guy didn't substantiate why he said it's easier on you guys as developers just to have this random memory hog crap going on but i know this ever since 1.6 remember when it rained zombies that was the beginning of the end for me when you guys came out with i think it was 1.6.4 i was in tears because zombie hordes and stuff would just flatten me i couldn't play dude so here i am trying to play this and i love bingo it's like a scavenger hunt and you know, it really tests you, and you got to find stuff from all over the game, all kinds of items and entities and blocks and, and craft stuff and biomes and, oh my gosh, different levels where different ores appear. And I love this game, you guys. I love this game. And I want to do Brian proud. I want to play this game and do it right. And yeah, any minute now, I'll have a much better computer coming, but I've been low income for a very long time, and I used to be able to play this game. I've been playing this game since right before Jungles. So that's like 1.3, maybe? It had just gone out of beta. So I'm not all the way back where Kurt J. Mack is with Far Lands or Buzz, but I'm, I, you know, I've been playing since pretty far back there. It's always been a bit of a struggle, but, you know, I've been able to hold my own. Ever since Ultra Hardcore came out, I can't touch Ultra Hardcore. I can't be, I can't be in a CTM map with more than five mobs at a time. You know, Vex is tricked out, tricksy, buffed up spawners and crazy mobs, hostiles. I can't even touch that. Look, I can't even go into the caves and in infernal mines. The empty caves, the ones where he built honeypots behind them for the mobs to 
fill in so that whatever cave you're in doesn't have many mobs, even though it's dark. I can't even do that because just the caves themselves and the lava and stuff, Inferno Mines is impossible for me. And I turned my animations off. You know, I used to use OptiPine. I can't right now because he's scrambling, trying to keep up with 1.8. I can't play this without OptiPine. I have to be able to turn off the bells and whistles. I want the animations that I want on. I don't need torches and lava and twinkly water and all that junk and smoke. Sorry, I'm drinking a Coke and smoking a cigarette because I'm a wreck. Look, I recorded four videos of this that I was going to splice together. Two of them didn't even record because my FPS was down to one so often that Bandicam said, screw this and threw him out. Trying to get Brian some test results so he knows what it, what's happening with regards to Brian, I said it, Lorgon. I'm trying to get him some test results so he knows what his beta testing of the next version of Minecraft Bingo is going to work like on a low-end machine. Look, okay, I paid $30 for this game, or close to it anyway. I didn't pay for it. A friend bought it for me. I can't afford to buy games. But she insisted that I had to have Minecraft, and she got me hooked on it, and I've been one of the biggest advocates and the biggest word-of-mouth promoters of Minecraft ever since then. I love the educational value of it. I see the potential for human potential in this, creativity and so on. This goes beyond all kinds of boundaries. It's teaching kids stuff about interactive digital technology that they'll need to know for the next century. Heck, you guys are even messing around with quantum computing with that partnership you've got with Google. Block by block where you're teaching people in developing kids in developing countries how to use computers, how to play Minecraft, and how to design architectural designs for community spaces. This is not just a game, Mogminer. I told you that in tweets today. This is not just a game. And I love this silly thing, but look at this. This isn't fair to me. I can't get anywhere with my YouTube channel, with my ability to play competitively with other people. I can't play PvP like this. I can't even aim the dang cursor. By the way, while you're doing stuff, tell somebody to make the wireframe around the hitboxes thicker. I'm vision impaired. I can't see those while I'm making you listen to me. This is the best FPS I can get, and I'm only recording with Bandicam. And Bandicam uses less of my CPU than any other recording software. I can't even use OBS. I have stripped this game down. I've dedicated, what is it? How do you, I don't know how you guys say it. You know all the technical. Don't laugh at me because I don't know the technical stuff. I'm not supposed to be a computer guru just to be able to play a game. I've stripped it down. I've put this version of Java on high priority, and I turned off the version of Java that was running the launcher. Nothing else is running on my machine except Bandicam and this. I've set the priority high. I've gone into every single game version on the launcher, and I've committed, what is it, two megs, two whatevers. You know, there's the minus X and the whatever. I followed those instructions, and I've dedicated two whatevers of memory to Java to run this damn thing. Yes, it's on Java 64-bit because I'm on a 64-bit laptop. I have tweaked and finagled this game till it screams to try to get it to play. Now, I live rural, Mog Miner, way out in the country in New Mexico. There are no jobs here. I'm 59 years old. I live in a parking lot, and I don't know what you guys call them out there in Sweden. We call them travel trailers. English people call them caravans. It's a recreational vehicle. You know, it's a trailer on wheels with, you know, stuff inside that you're supposed to use temporarily on little camping and recreational trips. And I'm living in it, and it's a piece of junk, and I don't have sewage, and I don't have running water, and the roof leaks. Things are hard out here, dude. I have less than $3 a day food stamps to eat off of. Now, I don't know what that translates into your kind of currency, but my kind of currency, if you went to McDonald's and you bought a Big Mac, right now they're on special, two for $5, or usually $5 a piece. All right, that's for one hamburger. 
Now, you can't buy hamburgers on food stamps, but you get my point. I'm getting a meal's worth of food stamps a day. I've got nothing out here. I've got disabilities. I'm an elder. I'm 58 year, 59 years old. I can't get to the nearest city. It's too much gas money. The nearest city's Albuquerque. I'm good at this game. I know a lot about the mechanics. I know a lot about mob behavior. I keep up with stuff. I keep up with the news and the snapshot updates. I keep up with stuff. I'm good at this game. And my way of presenting YouTube videos is about... My tagline is, there's no wrong way to play. My subscribers are people with disabilities. My subscribers are elders, little kids, uh, LGBTQI people, um, little girls, people of color who don't feel particularly welcome in gaming. And I see so much potential in this game to teach, to level the playing field so everybody has an opportunity to participate and contribute what they have instead of having their contributions squandered and lost. So I come in here and I record these videos and I get trounced by the stupidest little mobs. Like one time it was a tiny little magma cube. It was like getting killed by jello pudding. It was humiliating. And I keep doing it, and I keep doing it, because I believe in this game, I believe in its potential, I think I have stuff to offer and to teach, I know I do. I have a different way of approaching gaming because I'm not a gamer, that's why my name is a joke, I'm neither a grandmother nor a gamer. But I'm really committed to teaching people through this game, not uh, soapboxes and polemics and manifestos but really teaching people partly by example because I have brain injuries because I'm vision impaired because I'm an elder because I have issues with memory I know things about this game that other people don't for instance watch me while I'm mining and especially in there's one section here where I'm going to be um, shoveling a lot of gravel you'll notice that my um, Right mouse button keeps going. I'm not pressing it per block. The disability settings on my computer, I can finagle the mouse buttons so that I can um, keep either the right or the left mouse button pressed. The computer does it. I don't have to touch it. I don't have to weigh it down and all that junk that other people do or tape the button or any of that kind of junk. There's no mechanical wear and tear. On my mouse, there's no draining the batteries of my mouse. If I hold my mouse down for a few seconds, it will stay on. I know this because I have disabilities and I look through my disability settings on my computer. All these AFK fish farms and so on, can you imagine what a benefit it would be to people if they knew about this? I tried to tell them, but nobody listens to me because I have under 500 subscribers. I'm nobody. This is my point. That because we come from different places and we have different life experiences, we have other things to offer this game. And the game needs to be accessible to everybody, and that includes people that don't have much money to commit to hardware for gaming. Let's face it, this is a hobby. And it's not a very high priority when you've only got $3 a day food stamps. See what I'm saying? If this hadn't been gifted to me, I wouldn't be playing it. That's the truth. Um, Lorgon, please look down in the chat and so on and see what version of the game I'm on. I'm typing it in right now. I tried to uh, play the current version you got up publicly with 1.8.1. The frame rate was so low that Bandicam puked out the video. It didn't keep it. I have stuff to offer. There are a lot of us that have stuff to offer. And this game, of any game, is so collaborative. The reason it has developed the way it has is because of feedback from the players, 
to the developers and the developers playing with the players and interacting with the players and us as a community talking with each other. This game, more than probably any other, has been influenced by the players, by their equipment, by their knowledge and skills, by their questions, by their weaknesses. We have so much to contribute and this game is teaching so many skills and so much critical thinking and planning and how to take care of yourself and where chickens and eggs come from and what geology is and basic computer, like how computers count to 64. You know, there's a whole conversation going on about Gamergate and all this junk and I'm not going to get into it except to say this. It's not just women. There's a whole lot of us that don't get to participate because we haven't been encouraged in technology. We haven't been encouraged in mathematics or science or any of this stuff. There's a whole bunch of us that have a lot to contribute to gaming, to Minecraft specifically, and more specifically, more specifically to what Minecraft can teach kids. And part of that is dependent on people being able to access this game even if they don't have the funds for beefy gaming computers. I am very lucky because I have subscribers and friends on Facebook and Twitter and other social media who know what I'm doing and who believe in me. And about a dozen of them from all over the planet. And me going into debt and maxing out my credit cards and wiping out my bank account. Between us all, I'm getting this new gaming computer. And it's going to cost less. It's a used one, coming from Florida. It's going to cost less than crap top, the little laptop I'm playing on right now. I'm very lucky because people have watched me struggle and work hard and keep trying and keep trying and they know I know a lot about the game even if I can't play it worth a darn while recording and in 1.8 actually since 1.7.4 it's hard for me to play in single player when not recording it's very discouraging. It's a little better on po on servers. You know, I'll go to, especially like in creative, when I go to a creative server to build stuff. It's a little better there because the server handles a lot of the load. But it's to the point where I can't play. And I wonder, for me speaking out, I wonder how many hundreds, perhaps thousands of people there are who aren't speaking out. who are being shut out of this game because of the hardware they're on. Now, I know he's gone, but not just a good man. He's got his weaknesses, everybody does. Not just a good man. And I saw the look in his eyes and that I think the movie was called Minecraft, the story of Mojang. When the interviewer asked him about, this is after the segment on Minecraft EDU, which I adore, asked Notch what he thought of the fact that millions of little kids are playing this game. And then it's going to have an impact on society in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And Notch went from that kind of goofy, dorky smile he has, you know. And he got very sober. And it washed over him, the dawning of the consciousness that what he had produced here what Mo Yang was creating was going to have a profound impact on culture. 
and he said, well, we'd better do it right then. Little kids are designing soccer fields and community centers and gathering places for water and bus stations and train stations and other community gathering places all over the planet through the United Nations with the block by block program. Kids with autism have a server to play on. Neuropsych Son has a really rare um, brain disability. I believe it's a form of tumor cancer. And Neuropsych has started a foundation to do research on this really rare disorder. Neuro and River Girl just took their son Dan on a Make-A-Wish Foundation trip. This might not benefit Danny, but Neuro and River have a beautiful server called the Emerald Isle where kids can come and play and if they become members of the server, all the money goes to that research foundation. Galactic Craft is teaching kids about space flight and they'll go there. My dad worked on Apollo and Galileo and Voyager. My dad's recording equipment is still sending back data from outside the solar system now. The um, QCraft, teaching kids the basic concepts of quantum mechanics, of quantum computing. The beautiful building, the basics of electronics. I mean, shoot, you can build a 64-bit computer in Minecraft. You can build elaborate music boxes that can play orchestral arrangements. You can do that in Minecraft. A full-scale model of the USS Enterprise. Not the space shuttle, I'm sorry to say, but what a project. Never, ever forget what Minecraft is. What it's teaching. We don't know the potential of Minecraft. We don't know what the outcome's going to be. We don't have a clue. This is the foundation of the next generation of interactive digital technology. This is teaching kids the basics, the foundation, the beginnings of the skills they're going to need to live in a century we'll never know about. A century in great jeopardy because of, thing, of global politics and climate change and war and xenophobia and hate and this game can help teach kids out of that. This game is about potential. You have everything you need here and if you handle it very carefully you can do something beautiful that nobody ever thought of before that's not destructive, that doesn't ruin lives, that doesn't ruin the land. You can do something really beautiful with this game. I can't think of anything more valuable to teach children. And then there's the effect on elders like me. Gaming is really good for elders. Even the old flash games, online flash games, it helps with physical coordination, hand-eye coordination. It helps with short and even long-term memory. In my case, I've got post-traumatic stress disorder. This game has helped me enor enormously with my startle reactions and being triggered by PTSD because of the loud noises and the 
a sudden appearance of scary, dangerous things and uh, the pressure of having to work quickly to get something done. I'm working here as fast as I can and this is as good as it gets. You know, gaming has changed. It's not all young, Western European descended males who have permission and encouragement and technology and computational sciences and physics and mathematics. Because gaming is now multi-platform, a lot of people are coming to gaming that have never been here before. And a lot of us are elders and people of color and women and LGBTQI people and people with disabilities and low income people who have platforms now where they can actually play this game and they don't have to know how to adjust how much memory to uh, dedicate to Java like I do. I had to learn all that, believe me, I don't have any kind of a technical background. Gaming is changing and Minecraft is on most of those platforms. Neuropsych works on an Xbox for crying out loud. Those enormous elaborate roller coasters and stuff. So we don't know what the potential of Minecraft is, but I'll tell you what. If people can't access this game because of enormous memory dumps that Java 7 can't handle, if people can't access this game because a laptop like mine, which should not be inadequate and never was before, cannot function, we don't know who we're losing. We don't know who the next little genius is. You know, Stephen Hawking isn't even supposed to be alive, and he's fully disabled in a wheelchair with a speaking machine, and, and heck, he's a character on The Simpsons. And look what he's contributed. Now imagine if he was a little poor kid in West Africa and didn't have access to the Internet and didn't have access even to the little crap top like I've got. Imagine what we would have lost. Carl Sagan grew up in the tenements of New York, couldn't even see the stars. Imagine. In this game, we can see the stars. I told a little kid in the war zone, a slum area I lived in in Albuquerque once, we were in a church parking lot. I lived next door to the church because they had a food pantry and I was helping operate it. I was letting, teaching the community how to take responsibility for it and giving them jobs and teaching them management skills. And, you know, they ran the food pantry. We went from 10 individuals one time a month getting one sack of groceries with like dried macaroni and cheese and stuff. We went from that to 250 families a week taking home cases of food. Well, a little kid in the neighborhood, his name is Pepe. We were out in the church parking lot and I was looking up at the stars and I pointed out something red and I pointed it up to Pepe and I said, you see that red star up there? He said, yeah. I said, that's not a star, that's the planet Jupiter. And because I'm a child-friendly channel, I won't say exactly what he said, but he said, no spit. And then we went in my house on my old web TV, because I couldn't afford a computer, but I wanted to be on the internet for the kids. We went in a house and we looked up Jupiter. If you can't look up, you can't see those stars and you're gonna be trapped in those slums forever. Love this game as much as we do and let us access it without hurting ourselves or melting our equipment. This game is so much more than just a game. I'm curing my PTSD with it. I'm holding back the brain injuries with it. I'd hug you, but my arms don't bend. Thank you. Goodbye.